Let's start with one word, congratulations. That word is far too simple and overused to capture what this moment actually means. And I can only hope that somehow it feels bigger coming from those of us who know what you've been through and also what you're about to go through. People often say the biggest days in our lives are never exactly as we imagine them. But still, this year's commencements are over the top by anyone's standards. Somewhere, whether you want to think about it or not, I can almost guarantee that a dean is attending a virtual graduation in pajama bottoms and flip-flops. But look, none of you should feel obligated to pretend that virtual ceremonies and socially distant commencement speeches like this one are sufficient to acknowledge all that you've achieved. It just happens to be the best that we can do right now. I know that isn't very satisfying. If you don't already know, you'll soon find out that sometimes the best we can do right now is actually all we have to offer our patients, especially during a crisis like this one. When I thought about what to say to you, the COVID class, young doctors starting your career during a great pandemic, I found myself thinking about a story from my own life. A few years ago, I met a colleague in our hospital coffee shop. I was there to deliver a card on behalf of a patient. My colleague had operated on that patient a few months earlier, and she'd saved his life. That patient was my dad. My colleague's eyes filled with tears as she read what my father had written in that card. It said, I always hoped to see one of my grandchildren graduate from high school. And thanks to you, that is still a possibility. Now, as moved as I was by his words, I was also surprised. My dad said that? Really? See, my father is a stoic and very practical man. I had no idea that attending my eldest son's graduation, an event that is still several years in the future, meant that much to him. My dad has had a difficult life. Not only did he grow up during the Great Depression, but he and my mother have had to mourn the death of two children one of whom died during this pandemic. To me, my father has always been a no-nonsense, big picture kind of man. I didn't think that he'd care that much about a ceremony that I had always thought of as artifice. But he did care, a lot. So much so that when facing death, it was partly his motivation for survival. There's a good chance that people you love have been just as invested in watching you cross a stage for your medical school graduation. People you love have likely been dreaming of seeing you receive your degree, of hearing the word doctor in front of your name for the first time. Maybe that thought kept them going through their own hard times. Maybe you've pictured yourself walking across that stage, thinking to yourself, mom and dad, this is for you. Now instead, thanks to the pandemic, it's entirely possible that many of you haven't even seen your families in months, that you can't be with them at all right now. Instead of a graduation being a beacon of hope, a unifying moment of celebration, a victorious day in your family's history, it's just another Zoom meeting. It's just more time spent at a computer. And that is just another thing that you'll have to cope with. I know that some of you are probably too ashamed to tell anybody how disappointed you are. I know that some of you have felt trained to keep your emotions to yourself in certain circumstances. 
I know that some of you are afraid that someone will tell you just to be grateful because misery is all over the world right now because some people have lost everything. But if you haven't learned this yet, then know it now. Grief and gratitude are not mutually exclusive. You aren't selfish for wanting a meaningful recognition of years and years of hard work and sacrifice what you're mourning right now isn't sitting in a crowded auditorium listening to speeches like this one. You're mourning everything that celebration symbolized. That's what you've lost, and no one should underestimate or undervalue that. As my dad would tell you, as he did tell his surgeon, we literally live for moments like this. In some ways, I find it interesting how surprised we are by this disruption, the global medical emergency. After all, our medical training is a masterclass in how quickly life can change. It changes with one shadow on an x-ray. It changes with one lump where a lump doesn't belong. It changes with one complication during childbirth. And suddenly there's no wedding. There's no christening. There's no chance to watch your grandson graduate. Honestly, it should make you all wonder why becoming a doctor doesn't decimate all our expectations that anything can ever turn out well. But to survive something as demanding as medical education, we protect ourselves by putting faith in structure and expectations. We work on preset schedules and timelines, and we look forward to specific moments of transformation. When those things go away, it feels like the universe broke a pact with us. And for some of you, this may be the first time that the illusion of that pact has been shattered. It is painful, and you don't need to pretend that it isn't. But here's what I promise you. This is going to make you a better doctor. Why? Because it is going to rid you of things you only thought protected you, the barriers between you and your patients. I'm not talking about personal protective equipment. We need more, not less of that, and we need it urgently. I'm talking about another barrier, the imaginary wall that you've built between you and your patients. It's a wall that some teachers mistakenly tell you is a prerequisite for survival in medicine. Just the way some attendings are fond of quipping that you should never forget that the patient is the one with the disease. Forget that advice. This pandemic should already have taught you how wrong that is. See, what's happened in the last few months is a complete collapse of that separation, that imaginary wall. And now you see your own future as as fragile and as dependent on external forces as any patient under your care. This is a hard realization to process on top of everything else you've had to manage and process and learn to become a physician. But it's an important lesson. It's a valuable lesson. And it will make you into the best version of a doctor that you were already going to become. Now you'll be tempted to rebuild that wall. You'll be tempted to separate yourself again, to protect yourself, to divide the world back into us, the medical community, and them, the patients. I'm asking you not to do that. And that's because if you don't rebuild that wall, You'll remember that our patients are people who've lost their structure and their expectations, 
the things that they waited for, the things that they worked towards. If you think medical school is expensive, well, you're right, it is. But our real learning in life, the most profound and lasting insights, usually come at an even greater cost. The price of our insight at this moment is almost incomprehensible. But the truth is also that it's given us a gift. And that gift is clarity. I once attended a wedding in an ICU. The groom died a few days later. And we don't ask why someone would get married knowing they only had days left to live. We immediately understand the power of that moment, the symbolism, how clear it must have been to that couple in those final moments of their joined lives what truly mattered. Another one of my patients died last year, just days before a long-awaited grandbaby could be born. That baby wouldn't have magically grown to remember him if they briefly met. My patient mourned the symbol, the expectation, the forehead touch between generations. You've been handed something, put into a situation and asked to incorporate it into the story of your life. A crisis has a way of forcing us to grow up sooner than we planned, of teaching us lessons we couldn't have learned otherwise, of allowing us to hear and see people that we used to think were on the other side of an imaginary wall. I hope that my father will see his grandson's graduation. But I know that if he doesn't, if an ongoing pandemic or other circumstances prevent that moment, I will try to follow my own advice to you today. Do the best that you can right now. Grief and gratitude are not mutually exclusive. And let your imaginary walls stay down. Class of 2020, I promise you, you will never be forgotten. Not because of what this crisis has taken from you, but because you will be transformed by it in ways that will reveal themselves in due course. The world has changed, and so have you. You are better because of this. Patients will get better care because of this. Medicine will grow because of this. And so will you. Thank you.